Hello, my name is The Gaming Critic, where I review video games with no regrets whatsoever. Remember my Crash Team Racing review that I said they should take some inspiration and not copy everything? Well, this game is the exact opposite of what I just said. Crash Bandicoot will always hold a place to my heart very dearly. There are some games that became excellent, games that was in the middle, and games that was beyond terrible. And this game is no exception of being beyond terrible. Of all the Crash Bandicoot games that I got to enjoy as a kid, I never really got to enjoy this game. But however, Crash Nitro Kart isn't the worst Crash Bandicoot game as there's one game in the Crash Bandicoot series that is the absolute worst of the worst, the most shittiest Crash game I ever played, and we'll review that game in another time. So, how much did Nitro Kart copied Crash Team Racing? Well, join me in the race to the finish line as one of the worst Crash Bandicoot games on consoles, in my opinion, this is Crash Nitro Kart. Published by Universal Interactive and developed by Vicarious Visions, Crash Nitro Kart was released in 2003, and it was released on Game Boy Advance, GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. It all starts with Crash, Coco, and Crunch, enjoying their day and doing whatever Bandicoots do best, when all of a sudden, a light flashes on them and teleports the Bandicoots to another planet. Meanwhile, Cortex, Engine, and Tiny Tiger do... whatever bad guys do best, I guess? Then all of a sudden, another light flashes and teleports them to another planet. Before Crash and Cortex could interact, we found out that the person behind the kidnapping is Emperor Velo, the fastest racer in the galaxy. He announces a series of races, and whoever collects all 12 trophies and beat Velo in a race, will save Earth from destruction. The story does seem familiar, but uh... I just can't remember where it was from. Hmm... We also see more competitors. We see Team Antrance, along with Polar and Dingo Dial. Yeah! And Team Oxide, along with Zem and Zam. <laughs> Honestly, who, who gives a shit about these guys? I mean, you might as well add Uluru in that mix as well. But back onto Oxide. Yes. You heard me correctly. We finally get to play as Nitrous Oxide. And how does he play? Well, let's just say that he's different as before. We can choose which team to play as in Adventure Mode. Instead of having an all-rounder, choosing whatever characters we want, we get to choose either Team Bandicoot, which will allow us to play as Crash, Coco and Crunch, and Team Cortex, along with Cortex, Engine, and Tiny. The first thing we see is an introduction with Aku Aku or Uka Uka, depending on which team you choose. And it looks weird to look at. It was fine back in 1999, but in here, in 2003, it just seems a bit off. The races are fine, but there are a few problems. For starters, the controls are slippery. Every time I go to do a power slide, I don't feel confident in the controls, as I just keep on hitting the sides or falling off the track. If they were copying Crash Team Racing, at least they should have copied the tight controls. Every time I hit a corner, I end up losing all my speed and momentum, and it's a bitch to try to get back into first place. While some racetracks are different, there are a few that completely rips off the racetracks in Crash Team Racing.
Make way for Earth's finest! There is one thing they added that was different from Crash Team Racing, and it's the Team Meter. Once it's fully charged, you can use it and random items pop up for a limited amount of time. It is something new, but it does feel pointless to me. In Adventure Mode, you do have to race alongside with your team member. But get this, if your team member wins, you still lose the race. Which can be very frustrating, because you can't even hit your own team member. But if there's one thing Crash Nitro Kart did right, is the boss characters. Each of them having a unique difference between each other. You have Krunk, a creature who believes that Earth is just a home copy of his world. Nash, a shark who is always on the move. Norm, a mime who races alongside with his larger self. And Geary, a robot who is forced to clean anything that's dirty. It is a shame that you can't play as these characters, but it is pretty cool that they didn't mess up the boss characters. They added in an anti-gravity system. Well, we can obviously see how Mario Kart 8 was inspired by it. I guess what I'm trying to say is Mario Kart 8 copied a good idea from a mediocre game. The graphics in this game looks pretty good and well done. It's the graphics that should have been in Wrath of Cortex. And before you ask, I'm not trying to tear Wrath of Cortex apart. I'm just saying, if they had Nitro Kart's graphics in Wrath of Cortex, then maybe the game would have been a bit better. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Just like Crash Team Racing, the tokens C, T, and R are back. Or in this case, C and K tokens. But it looks like they put in the tokens in places that just takes you off the track. And by the way, you still have to win the race in order to get the token. As far as the relics go, it's fine. But it can be irritating, because the races take forever to finish. Once you collected all 12 trophies, Velo is revealed, and you race him in a completely new track. Now, some of you may not like the idea, because it's on a completely new track. But actually, this is a good idea. In Crash Team Racing, when you face Oxide, you race him in a track you already raced on, so you already knew the track layout and it wasn't going to be challenging. In Crash Nitro Kart, racing on a new track brings challenge. So after you win, you beat his time trials and you face him again. Once you win again, you get an ending, depending on which team you chose. So, what's next? Trying to unlock shit, play with your friends, and do I need to say any more? Crash Nitro Kart is an exact copy clone of Crash Team Racing. Only with slippery controls, racetracks that rips off Crash Team Racing, and adding in new things just didn't work out. And sure, the game does look good, and I can't really complain about the soundtrack, but it sadly doesn't save Nitro Kart for a perfect score. Crash Nitro Kart gets 4 out of 10. <laughs> the next game I'm going to review is a racing game I enjoyed as a kid, but is it still worth playing? Join me next time as we take a look at Flat Out 2. Thank you for watching this review and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share the video and don't forget to subscribe. My name's The Gaming Critic, telling you to keep calm and keep playing video games.